There were so many beautiful dresses there and I wanted to buy almost everything I laid my eyes on. But Mother only allowed me one. I am sure Manuel will love it too. I put on my new dress today and it indeed was an apt choice. I could see Manuel liked it too. We caught each other's sight many a times. Manuel asked me for a stroll on the bank of the great Amazon, to which I readily agreed. It was a special evening and the serene wilderness made it even more beautiful. We were so happy together that I wished time would stand still. It wasn't until dusk that we realised we had to rush back. On our way back, while on board Jangada, I saw Torres. He was looking at us in a very peculiar manner. He was visibly agitated and his expressions were frightening. Somehow I am starting to feel he doesn't like seeing me and Manuel together. The course of events took a very strange turn once we came back. Benito informed us that he had found small pieces of paper scattered all around the house. They seemed to be ripped and had some text written on them. It was time to find the rest of the pieces and solve the mystery.
Manuel was of the view that these papers were a clue to a secret message and somebody is trying to play mind games with us. We put all the pieces on the table inside the study and decided to solve the mystery the next day. In the evening I was alone in the garden when Torres came there. I was a little stunned at his sudden arrival and at the fact that he stood very close to me. And then he started talking, more about himself than anything else, but I continued to listen. I did not know what else to do at that moment. Luckily, Mother came out of the house and came straight towards us. Seeing her, Torres promptly greeted her in a bizarre manner and then left without saying anything. The whole incident was awkward and left Mother and me a little uneasy. Just then, Manuel came out and reminded us of the pieces of paper we had collected. We came in and started putting clues together. Beware, O oh filthy convict, disgrace to the name of human blood, owing the mark of betrayal borne upon the traces of time. Time shall not be your saviour from the intimate hell waiting. Blood shall ooze from the wounds unveiling your sins. The stench of this blood shall bear witness of the crime that you hide under your riches which appear as your dying chance to elude the curse of ashen death staring you in the eyes. Release the gold and the silver and the precious stones, for if you cohere with them, death awaits both to be perished to nothingness. It was a very strange message indeed, 
Everyone was startled by the mysterious and threatening message. We were all discussing it actively, but Father remained quiet during the whole affair. I could see he was thinking deeply, but remained visibly distraught. That night, I woke up and heard people screaming and running on the deck. I went to the living room where Benito and Manuel were already present. They informed me that the jangada was damaged and water was now rushing into the ship's cellar. Thankfully, there were no serious injuries and the next morning we were all busy salvaging whatever supplies were left.
Our destination was not far now, and in spite of what had happened earlier, we were relieved that Brazil was nearing. That night, I could not sleep well. I had a strange feeling that something was just not right. I went out for some fresh air and wondered what the future held for me and Manuel. That was when I heard someone talking in a low voice. I started to follow the voices out of curiosity. Was that father? But who could he be talking to at this part of night? With a beating heart, I reached the deck and saw father talking to Torres. I was near enough to hear them and could now make out the words. Torres's voice was deep and threatening. He talked about some evidence. Evidence of what? What could this possibly be? Then I heard the words that nearly made me faint. I could not believe what I had heard. In return for the evidence, Torres asked Father for my hand in marriage. That evil brute was asking for my hand in marriage. Father looked as infuriated as I was, and yet he appeared to be so helpless. <laughs>